Hi, sun in my eyes, brass facts here. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Flow 556K from Huxworks. I think it would not be a stretch to say that the Flow 556K from Huxworks is probably one of the, if not the most hyped up can in recent history. A lot of influencers and a lot of people have gotten one of these and have made some pretty impressive claims. Not only is this a low back pressure flow through can, it seems to have performance similar, if not on par, to duty sized cans. Considering, uh, and uh, that is quite an outlandish claim. So that's what's gonna be the focus on today's video. Not necessarily getting into the nitty gritty of a review. How big is it? How small is it? Uh, or how much does it weigh? What does it do? Whatever. But instead focusing on how the Flow 556K can holds up compared to a regular can, despite having the Flow technology. Also because I'm really late to the party on this one and a lot of people have already reviewed one of these, I basically have to get mine as normal people do, wait nine months, wait 12 months, and peruse the Reddit NFA super threat every single day, desperately hoping uh, mine has finished. 90 days, my ass. Speaking of which, thank you Huxworks and thank you Mike for getting one of these in my hands, despite the long wait. So yeah, I got this for free from Huxworks uh, outside of the you know $200 tax stamp. That actually makes, I think, what was it? Four, review, uh, four companies this year that have actually sent me something uh, for free to review. So I appreciate it, but you know, also full disclaimers on the table. I think everyone at this point knows the flow through promise, but for the five of you that don't, I got you. The fireball and noise coming from your gun is the result of high pressure gas rapidly expanding to meet ambient conditions. You know, explosion things. Traditional cans try to mitigate this by adding a big ol' hunk of hollow metal to the end of your gun to allow the gas to do some expansion beforehand before hitting ambient conditions. This drastically reduces the energy state of the gas, meaning the bang and fireball are reduced. Yeah, hard-hitting science right here. Anyone that has ever shot a suppressor knows what this means in practice. Gas to the face. Take it from a lefty, this is an unpleasant experience. Actually, not that anyone cares about lefties. The issue doesn't just extend to your face though, but to the firearm as well, increasing cyclic rate, parts wear, blasting, or cooking out all of your lubricant, and massively increasing the fouling of the firearm. While we can mitigate this via adjustable gas box, piston systems, heavier buffers, and more, it's just that, it's mitigating, and no gun with a suppressor on it will behave like it does without one. With a flow-through can, instead of trapping the gas in a series of baffles, a percentage of that gas is forced to take a spiraling path through the suppressor, blah, 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 fluid dynamics, I basically flunk that class. All that matters is that back pressure is reduced significantly. So yeah, that's the spiel. Pretty shrimple, but an absolute game changer on multiple avenues. Your gun will be more reliable or the, over the course of a combat load because you're not getting a lube facial the whole time. Disappointing for some of you, I know. We have way less fouling, still technically slightly more than non-suppressed, but it's way less, and consistent performance between suppressed and unsuppressed usage without requirement of running an adjustable gas block and alternating your system, whatever. It's also just a, frankly, massive quality of life thing. You know, we shoot, and we shoot a lot. A lot more than we will ever in a real quote-unquote scenario. And I want to shoot with a suppressor when I can pun intended, and it's really annoying to look like I worked in a coal mine after every single range shooting trip. Look at his yeah, face! He looks like a, he looks like a Dickensian orphan. Right? Out of labor? Please sir, Please, may, sir I have some may I have some more? But here's the key, nothing in life is free, so that's the purpose of this video. How does the suppressor do as just a suppressor? How much have we given up compared to the traditional suppressor to get this flow through technology on board? This video is sponsored by VentureSur. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Venture Surplus, your number one brass facts approved spot to buy surplus gear to fill out your tactical repertoire. I just filmed this intro in 20 degree cold weather before wind chill. I'm wearing four layers, including an underlayer, and I'm still cold. What I need is a hat. Venture Surplus has me and you covered with a whole collection of head socks on sale that you can combine with my sales code down below to save a shitload of money. What do we got here? Oh, a micro fleece cap. A waffle topper, but for your head and face. A waffle topper just for your head. Whatever this is, and a lot more. Go check them out. I'll even put the link for this collection down in the description. You know, 80% of the human's body heat comes out through their head. Yeah, my head would have to be fucking enormous. Ignore what my cameraman says. 100% of the heat loss is through your head. So don't be like me in the intro clip. Wear something on your head to keep your head warm. And go check out Venture Surplus.
What's the sound like? In short, at least proximal to the shooter and to the shooter itself, the tone is typically more pleasant than a traditional K can, with some exceptions, but it's still louder than any decent duty size can. Basically, it's a middle of the road to maybe above average K can, which makes sense because it's a K can. But unfortunately, because my can makes a ringing harmonic noise, much like a three prong flash hider, any standout performance, at least for me, was kind of kicked in the nuts as the noise is fucking obnoxious. Now this is a bit weird from a review standpoint, as a non-significant number of Flow 556Ks anecdotally also have this ringing issue, but just as many people don't, so who knows what's going on there. Downrange performance has a similar story. In a blind test, it was functionally indistinguishable from other K-cans in the context of a two-way range. Basically, how does it sound downrange at 200, 300, and 500 yards, with the gun pointed at you, roughly, and the gun pointed away from you, and with other, you know, objects in the way. If you really want to get into the detail of that, I made this video right here. Go ahead and watch it. You know, or don't. I'm not your boss. The only hypothetical scenario I could see, or, well, here, eh, where the Flow 556K might have issues is approaching a target from the front side, slightly non-line of sight, within about 100 yards. The Flow tends to have a slightly more boomy noise, making it easy to locate at these shorter ranges. The amount of scenarios where this would matter, though, I struggle to come up with. However, this boomy noise tends to go away as we get out further in range and less on the front side of the gun. So if I had to guess, it's because the Flow 556K probably has a very wide cone on how its volume kind of comes out uh, versus other cans which have a little bit more narrow of an envelope and none of that begins to matter as you get out further and you're hearing you know, secondary and reverb of the noise. But I don't know, that's just kind of a theory for me. So really with the Flow 556K, at least on noise wise, Expect K-can-like performance, maybe with a better tone. This time? I wore, wore my diaper today, so. You bring your extra undie. Dude, you got a fatty, dude. You got some cake, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you look like that dude on the internet with the fucking oversized ass. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Like those, you're hitting them squats, uh, Stop rotating. Oh, shit! <laughs> Let's talk about flash now. This is a fun one because I think a lot of you absolutely believe this thing is a blast forwarding device. It gets its shit pushed in in the flash suppression department. No. Well, maybe. Ah, it depends. To the human eye, both downrange and to other nearby shooters in dusk environments, the can is virtually invisible. It's not fireballing and peak brightness is actually very low. Lower than any 30 cal K can, obviously those all fireball, but debatably better than a lot of 5.56 K cans, especially in short barrel usage. It even feels semi-competitive with some duty cans. As we take it into dark environments, we notice a cone of spark on every single shot. Larger than most flash jets we see on suppressors, but also significantly dimmer. In practice, I find these sparks are basically invisible at any meaningful distance, so from the perspective of the flow-through design memes that are currently in escape velocity because the Surefire RC3 is being a literal fire-breathing dragon in certain configurations, I'd argue Hey, not only is the Flow 556K acceptable in the flash department, I'd say it's probably even above average, especially when you compare it to other short suppressors. But under night vision, we have a different story. That spark cloud, which is basically sufficiently dim to the human eye that it may as well not be there, does get picked up by night vision pretty readily. Up close, it's not really a big deal compared to any other cans. All cans, I mean all cans, will typically auto-gate your night vision one frame with the suppressor to the shooter or anyone close by. The downrange signature is significant and comparable to the lower range of K-cans, aka 30 cal K-cans on SBRs, the devil's combination. A slight redeeming factor here though, if you go cyclic, so you know you just you know, run the trigger as fast as you can, most night vision flash signature for suppressor downrange skyrockets to a really high peak, where interestingly the flow doesn't increase in signature, it just kind of starts there. All right, thermal signature, this is kind of a big one, but it's also mostly completely a night vision thing. So if you don't care about that, then move along. Uh, sidebar, all suppressors look the same under thermals when they're hot, they're just nuclear hot compared to anything. So this part, thermal doesn't really matter. Uh, 
Let's crack straight into, I've been watching too much Tarkov. I'm not even going to prime you on this one. I'm just going to say it. the thermal signature on the Flow 556K as translated into night vision and you know, the visual spectrum is probably the worst on the entire market. You're not going to have a huge issue where you see it you know, visually, but under night vision, the combination of being a tubeless design, it's a monocore block of material, and the much higher ratio of internal to external volume and the size to performance ratio, you name it, this can becomes the mother of all popsicles. And it does so really fast. A single magazine is enough to give you a full science course in black body radiation. Do you see this dot moving around downrange? That's not my laser aiming module. That's a suppressor. That is a serious compromising effect, no matter how you slice it. Good Lord, look at that thing. You could put a suppressor cover on it, but in my experience, even with colder cans, unless you want to graft a suppressor cover onto your suppressor, eh, I would skip it. Also, the can cools off actually relatively quickly, so I'd rather just let it thermally vent than strap an insulator to it. Your mileage may vary here. I haven't actually done all that much testing with suppressor covers, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. The saving grace here is that the can is short enough that you don't really see it in the shooter's field of view, um, especially on short barreled usage, so this light show is limited entirely to people other than yourself. So an important aspect that we haven't really talked about is how the suppressor holds up. Well, this is kind of a three-part thing, so bear with me here. First off, in terms of how it's held out externally, oh, it's actually done pretty well. A lot of suppressors that I've owned tend to get pretty beat up. Now, I don't think I'm overly harsh on my gear, but, but Hop snorted an entire bottle of bush light out of his nose when I said that to him and then laughed at me. So, you know, uh, take it for what it is. But uh, yeah, this thing has had, you know, standard wear, in my opinion, over the course of six months and 4,000 rounds. And on the outside, oh, it's looking pretty good. No chunks of metal peeling off. That sometimes happens with cans when you buy accent forward a river and go face first into a rock or, you know, fall over aggressively three times or roll down a mountain, seems to be doing all right. The only exception to that might be the external coating. Ignore this part over here, that's rattle can. The Cerakote job is doing okay. It kind of looks like a Michael Jackson situation, to be honest. Uh, there's this little spots where it's coming off. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Uh, at first glance, it might seem like I'm simply cooking off the suppressor paint, right, the Cerakote but uh, I have a friend that's also kind of, you know, going through the rounds with one of these. He's not reviewing it, you know, for the internet, but he's reviewing it for his company. And they have a really high round count on with theirs. So I don't know if it's because they're just doing mag dumps. Well, I do, you know, way less round count per second, but I keep that, you know, that rate of fire going for an entire training session, sometimes upwards of, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, and I keep it nice and hot. I, I have no idea. Or it might be the cleaning agent that I use. Who the fuck knows? Overall, it's not too big of a deal, even though we are seeing, yes, uh, we're starting to eventually get down to uh, the steel. There is one final component that uh, we kind of can't brush away, and that's uh, barrel erosion. This is the part where, you know, I kind of have to be honest. I don't own that many suppressors because suppressors kind of uh, suck to get your hands on. I only have essentially three rifle suppressors. My group has a shitload of suppressors. I get to shoot all of those, but really only those cans have achieved really any meaningful round count. So I don't have a huge, you know, data set to pull from. The Hux Flow 556K is exhibiting some barrel erosion at the primary, you know, barrel blast area, whatever we want to call it. There is some barrel erosion at 4,000 rounds. Uh, you know, some people that know more about suppressors are going to have to chime in here. But, you know, here's the data for you. You can make your decision. I'm going to choose to kind of just view it as a cost of doing business with suppressors. I see this with a lot of cans, but, you know, once again, it's more anecdotal. Editing brass facts here. Uh, I contacted Huxworks. They said this is about to be expected at about 4,000 rounds plus. So, cool. So yeah, that kind of covers the bigger features of the suppressors. But since the NFA sucks an entire penis all the way down to the shaft and balls, you are typically going to have a couple suppressors in your life. So how they kind of interact with you, you know, outside of the hard quantifiables is also important. Let's start with the muzzle device on this guy. Ugh, I swear, suppressor muzzle devices are basically printer ink. It's how they get the money out of you. And the Hux muzzle device is about 150 bucks. 
these things, to be sure, are required for the suppressor to work, not just from the perspective of that's all the suppressor mounts to at this time, but also from the point of view of this muzzle device is actually designed to interface with the flow through pass of the suppressor. It also, you know, it's actually a very nice taper style, meaning I didn't really notice any POA, POI shifts, and it's very consistent on its remounting. Combined with the inherent design of the can, which self tightens itself to the muzzle device, meaning you don't need to be worried about this can self-loosening under recoil, like say handgun suppressors, which typically like to commit Sudoku by unthreading themselves in three rounds and jumping into the path of the bullet, you get a stupidly firm lockup just by hand tightening it without a locking collar system. Hey, that's pretty cool. It's also a major pain in the ass. If I had to guess due to coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch, as the can self-tightens and the device heats up, it will self-tighten itself so much that when it cools, the suppressor can no longer be removed without a crescent wrench. So QD is a bit of a misnomer here. This is more of like a QA, quick attach. Stole that from Chris from 1911 Syndicate. Removing it requires about as much work as a direct thread suppressor. Also, PSA, remember this can is reverse threaded, so you don't spin the muzzle device off when you try to get the can off. It's not righty tighty lefty loosey. It's lefty loosey righty tighty. No, fuck. Righty lefty fuck. What? Righty loosey lefty tighty? Which actually sounds just as valid. The muzzle flash hider is it's okay. It's 150 bucks, so you're already pissed off when you buy one of these just for the sake of itself. And while it's a good flash hider, it's uncharacteristically loud, even on long guns, so I don't know what's about that. But generally, you're only gonna buy one of these things, you know, for one of these suppressors. For those that own a lot of guns, but not that many suppressors, you're gonna probably be annoyed with this can because you're gonna try to play musical chairs with suppressors and find that it's kind of awkward. I would kind of more view the suppressor in the same way you'd view, say, a direct thread can. Something that you'd expect to leave on guns for the majority of the time, and you can swap it. Actually, it's easier to swap than a direct thread can because you don't really need to be worried about torquing it on to any significant degree. But, you know, obviously compared to a direct thread can, you also do have the weight of the muzzle device. Okay, uh, cleaning is a big thing we need to talk about because the Flow 556K, to a degree, is kind of unique in this aspect. First off, there's a rumor going around on the internet that these things need to be replaced at 10k rounds or so. No, this came from an FBI contract for the minimum listed suppressor life in extreme full auto conditions. The thing that is true though is this can needs to be cleaned very frequently. Now, I'm starting to learn that's probably true with all suppressors. I neglected to clean my Sam and S over the course of like six years, and now there's so much carbon in there that I can't ever actually, even when cleaning it multiple times, get it back to its original weight. So that thing weighs like five ounces more than it normally does. With this can, you want to clean it about once every 2,000 to 4,000 rounds as the little vents on the end fill up with carbon. Which, in emergency, the, the can still works with these things fully filled up, and Huxworks has multiple cans that have never been cleaned. Uh, the performance is just reduced. I ran my cam personally to uh, just shy of 3,000 rounds, cleaned it, and then did it again while I was writing the script at slightly over 4,000 rounds. The process is pretty simple. Take a Ziploc bag, put the can in the bag, fill it with CLR or hops number nine or something to that effect, wait 24 hours, rinse. Then you're gonna want to mag dump about 60 to 100 rounds through the gun, well, through the suppressor, because it's gonna be useless for those 60 to 100 rounds. You won't even be able to see your target. Oof. Oh! <laughs> that thing of black powder rifle, dude. Just got it. Just a little bit. Jesus. I don't know what they did with the Huxworks can, but that gut, their version, literally blew a load down range. Oh, yeah. So, back to that initial question. Yeah, this is a flow through can, but how well does it do as a suppressor? I think the answer is pretty clear by now. It's essentially a above average K can with the exception of the night vision performance component. So, in my opinion, that's a pretty damn good can, all things considered. Now, there are certainly aspects that you have to consider, like the mounting system being fairly proprietary and a little bit annoying to deal with, but it does come with some upsides and is, you know, obviously integral to the can design. Uh, a more important way of kind of viewing it is who does this can make sense for? From the perspective of raw sound reduction, say you want to use this for hunting, maybe long range, or home defense, scenarios where you may reasonably not put on any ear pro, I don't necessarily think this is a great can for that. It's not that it's necessarily loud, it's just you can do far better in sound reduction. 
uh, than this guy right here. It's also a bit blasty, like I said, uh, especially with kind of, you know, off to the sides and a little bit to the front. So from that perspective, maybe not. I think this can mostly is at home in a fighting rifle style setup. You're shooting supersonic rounds, you're gonna be wearing ear pro. So mainly the purpose of the suppressor at that point is, you know, sound reduction downrange for, you know, other people or, and flash suppression. And in both regards, this thing does pretty well. I think the easiest way to explain what I think about this can is basically, yeah, my main rifle is going to continue using this can as time goes on. Now, I have two quote-unquote main rifles that are set up very similarly. One of them is going to continue to use a large duty style can, specifically in conditions where I might actually care about that downrange night vision performance, and then in other scenarios where I want, you know, a lighter can where I'm willing to give up a little bit of performance, I think this is actually a pretty good fit for it and I'll be using this can in those scenarios. And trust me, I prefer those scenarios a lot more purely on the fact that I won't get lung cancer after 10 years doing this. All right, that's been some assy facts for you here today. This time talking about the Flow 556K. Yeah, we put a lot of rounds through this thing over like six months. This was a long process. So if you wanna support endeavors like that, well, consider heading over to Subscribestar. You get access to a podcast myself and Hop do, as well as some early access to all of these videos before they go up to YouTube and sometimes, though very rarely, more. All right, that's been fun. We'll see you guys in the next one. How the hell did I talk about a suppressor for 21 minutes? The world wonders. Wow, <laughs> she can hear everything. Activation, Hello. Ronald McDonald. Come here, lie down. Snoof, snoof. <laughs> She's trying to get aggressively comfortable. <laughs> Oh my god, the crack eyes, oh my god.